All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so today I want to go over this video here and show the the subtlety and the deception uh, in this video. Before we get into that, though, I want to touch on this particular video here, and just to show as an example of something that I've talked about uh, many times before. And that is this idea of sex after Jesus returns. It's not in the Bible. It's a complete contradiction to what we read in the Bible. But this is what so many people are preaching. 99.9% .9 of all the preachers in the world teach this scenario where there's going to be sex after Jesus returns and that's not true at all and it all it does is make me wonder if their whole doctrine is based on sex 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 to me I think they're just watching too much HBO and Cinemax and they're thinking about sex all the time sex 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 and then when they go to preach their bible doctrines it's all full of sex sex and more sex all right so and i want to uh, harp on this as often as possible so i mean this should be obvious in my mind in my opinion this is so obviously incorrect so let's get into it. All right, so this guy, he's saying, let's listen to what he says. All the children of God will partake in the first resurrection. All right, to be fair, he's just, he, he, this isn't his own teaching. He's getting this from somebody else, All right? He's been deceived by somebody who was also themselves deceived. And it just makes me wonder, do people even care about the truth anymore? that doesn't partake in the first resurrection. They have a thousand years to turn their hearts away from darkness and destruction, away from death, to turn their hearts away from iniquity and sin and the lust of the flesh and turn it to Jesus. But not everyone will, because when the dragon is loosed, he will gather an army that can't be numbered. And they yeah, right there. You heard what he said, right? Let me repeat what he said. All right, and everyone that doesn't partake in the first resurrection, they have a thousand years, a thousand bonus years to turn their hearts away from darkness and destruction, away from death, to turn their hearts away from iniquity and sin and the dirty, filthy, stinky, sex, lust of the flesh and turn it to Jesus. But not everyone will. That statement right there. What you're saying is that there's going to be dirty sex. Filthy, stinky, dirty sex. After Jesus returns for a thousand years. It's just mind-boggling to me. That why would Jesus return and it wouldn't be the end of the world. This sort of stuff will still go on. It doesn't make any sense. Yet 99.9% .9 of every preacher in the world teaches it today. It's incredible. It really is. Now, I don't know how people can't see this. So you got Jesus returning and essentially nothing happens. Unless, I guess, you want to say that, uh, well, you're changed into your glorified body and you're ruling over people that are not in their glorified bodies. Am I right? 
So you're going to be able to stick your finger at them and what, tell them what to do? Make them go get you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? I mean, what is it, man? What kind of scenario do you have in your mind? Just be honest and talk about it. Tell somebody about it. Maybe you can hear the words coming out of your mouth and realize how stupid you are. Seriously. Are they going to be having sex? Well, according to this guy and, and, and uh, it, you know, everybody else that's honest about what they believe, uh, you know, in regard and in, in relation to, uh, you know, this teaching, right? They believe that the unsaved will be having sex. Or will the saved people and their glorified bodies be having sex? Well, I've already shown you people are teaching that. Um, it's insane. People don't care about the truth. Um, but the thing, there's two things here I, I want to bring up. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. And this is when justice is done. All right. Now, I've shown you in Luke 18, and it's just not, it's not just in Luke 18. I mean, if, you, if anybody watches uh, me preach on this stuff, and I point to the same verses all the time, it's just to keep it simplified. If you want to call me out on this, I can get more into it, because this is all throughout the Bible. That when God returns, there will be justice for us that are his people, which cry out day and night unto God. Here in Luke 18, verse 7, And shall not God avenge his own elect? Avenge his own elect? which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with him, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? So just, <laughs> it's unbelievable, man. When the Son of Man, that's Jesus, when he comes, will he find faith on the earth? This is implying that he will do justice, that he will avenge his own elect. Uh, and then, of course, the question, shall he find faith on the earth? That's incredible because we, we know that in the days of Noah, there was only eight souls saved. Eight souls and Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. All right? Eight souls. Eight souls. And so in Matthew 24, it says, except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. All right, remember Luke 18? I read it two seconds ago. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. This obviously means that if God allowed things to continue as they are, there would come a point to where nobody would be saved. All right, so put this together, then it's very clear that God will avenge his elect when the Son of Man comes. In other words, when Jesus comes, and it clearly 
says that all the tribes of the earth will mourn. Why? Because they know it's the end of the world. Right? In Luke 21, men's hearts failing them for fear. People are going to be having heart attacks because they know this is it. It's the end of the world. And not only that, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, the sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. All right, when Jesus comes back, man, it's going to be obvious. It's a big, big deal. Now, in 2 Peter chapter 3, we get further description of the sun being darkened and the moon not giving her light and the stars falling from heaven and the powers of the heavens being shaken. It says here, The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. With a great noise. With, and here... In Matthew 24, it says, And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. Here in 2 Peter 3, it says, The heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up up seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation in godliness looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of god wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat Man, just from a common sense, simple, logical standpoint, man. When this happens, it's the end of the world. And knowing that and accepting that, then you got to realize, hey, there's going to be a new world. A new earth with new heavens. And when Jesus returns... It, that's it's gonna happen no matter what you teach no many no matter how many times you watch Hollywood movies and, pre and preach doctrines in accordance to what you saw on TV you know it's not gonna change the truth when Jesus comes he's gonna say behold I make all things new. Now, he's not lying. When he comes in the clouds of heaven, he's going to make all things new. All right. Now, uh, I mean, okay, so I was going to end it there, but one real quickly here, just in case, man, just in case, for all that is in the world, for all that is in the world, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world passes away, and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of god believes on the lord jesus abides for ever the world is going to pass away and the dirty sex is going to pass away with it all right so this stuff is this is not bible 
You call yourself pasture. You, you should call yourself parrot. Parrot Jason Charlton because you're parroting the same thing that you heard somebody else say. You're not getting this stuff from the Bible. You're getting it from another man. It, this stuff is not in the Bible. A thousand bonus years of sex? It's not in the Bible, Jack, Jason, whatever your name is. All right, so let's let's uh, move on, okay? Now, I don't know what I was going to talk about here, the first resurrection. Okay, so this guy, he says, uh, let me just, let me make this short. Give you a summary of what this guy talks about. This is incredible. I mean, you think this was stupid? This guy... <laughs> He doubles down on stupidity. He says that the first resurrection is not Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the first resurrection. I mean, he even, I mean, this is incredible. He willingly ignores, I'd like to show you. I'm afraid I'd go on an hour. You know how I am. Let's just um, let's let's go to First Thessalonians four and First uh, Corinthians fifteen. Just open these two up and see what happens here. Okay, so in First um, Corinthians fifteen, he um, boy, he he skates. This guy skates. He really does. He tries to wiggle and skate. Try to get around. And try to do everything possible to preach a doctrine that fits the Hollywood movie with Nicolas Cage called Left Behind. All right, now, in order to do that, you have to ignore Jesus Christ and his resurrection, his rising from the dead. Right, you got to just dismiss it. Just forget about that. And just forget it. And then claim that he essentially is the first resurrection. Because he's claiming that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, that he will be resurrected. Along with a bunch of other people. That he claims that when Jesus comes, there's a resurrection and that's the first resurrection. Completely ignoring... The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, and he even quotes from 1 Corinthians 15. And there's two things here I want to show you. First of all, um, the, the, it's very clear. Jesus is the resurrection. All right. If Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain. Right. And so these guys' preaching is vain. That teach this idea that Jesus is not the first resurrection. It's insanity. Now, here in verse, uh, let's see, where are we going here? But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. He is the first resurrection. It's clear. You can't skate around this. I mean, you can try. You can lie. You can deceive. You can ignore. But you cannot change the truth. Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die... Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule and all authority and power for he must reign till he has put all 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 enemies under his feet 
the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Now, this goes back to the book of Genesis. I mean, from this is prophesied all throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible. Genesis 3, verse 15. I, the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. God is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever. All right. It's the end of all evil forever. When Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, he must reign till he's put all enemies under his feet. All enemies. All means all. Not some. And then you get a bonus thousand years of dirty sex and another opportunity to do it again. Why in the world would anybody want to go through this again? It's mind-boggling, insane. It's dirty, filthy, stinky. And these guys ought not to be teaching this stuff. Uh, and I think it's just representative of the time that we're living in and all the deception that's in the world today. It's greater than it's ever been. And it makes it almost impossible for anybody to get saved, especially young people, to get saved in today's world. And it takes a miracle. Now, you can argue it's always taken a miracle, but it, I mean, it, it's really harder for young people, harder today than it's ever been. Because of dirty, filthy dreamers like this, and it's let me. I don't want. I don't want you to think I'm pointing my finger at him when he's just parroting what 99.9% .9 of all the preachers in the world today are preaching and parroting. It's it's insanity, absolute insanity. So there's that part. Okay, first of all, like I said. Jesus is the first resurrection and then we scroll down here and it's incredible you know when Jesus comes uh, it's obviously the end of the world and it clearly here let me read this behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ or I'm sorry for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. All right. So, and this is parallels uh, with uh, First Thessalonians four. First, the okay. Let me first read up. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, this happens at the last trump, right? When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and the angels gather together the elect. All right, this is the end of the world, judgment day, the great day of the Lord, and we shall be changed. We shall put on immortality, and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death. Is swallowed up in victory. Wow. And that's it. That's it. So when death is swallowed up in victory, then there is no more death so therefore you cannot have a bonus thousand years of sex and death it doesn't work all right it doesn't work at all so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world, 
and death shall be swallowed up in victory and Jesus will say he'll sit on the throne and say behold I make all things new all right so that's that's it that's all I want to talk about I guess there's one more point that I want to make and these guys man I'm telling you they don't understand nothing they got to get every single point wrong and they say well they point they they share these verses in 1 Corinthians 15 and they say that well you know you're in the flesh right now and then when um you 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 know Jesus comes and you're resurrected and you're going to be a spirit being you're going to be a spirit being you know it's, it's weird it, it's just weird to me because that's what the mormons teach they teach some weird stuff man and that's one of them that we're not going to be spirit beings right now we're spirit beings if you want to get technical about this we that are born of god we are born of the spirit of god therefore we're spirit beings now we're not just invisible ghosts we're not casper the ghost wandering around in air we are actually gonna be in bodies very much like the ones that we're in now except imperishable incorruptible bodies all right for we're we're in this uh, corruptible flesh but we're going to put on incorruption all right we're just not going to take everything off and be invisible ghost and that's the impression i get whenever i hear somebody say spirit beings <laughs> all right, so a couple things here real quickly oh here it talks about Oh, no, it doesn't. No, 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 not there. Not there. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere is it being fervent in spirit. No, that's not spirit beings. Being, no, that's not it. No, doesn't mention anywhere at all about this idea of we turning into Casper the Ghost. It's not anywhere. So. All right, so I want to point out one verse to, I mean, Jesus he 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 gives us everything man he really does he shows us when he was resurrection when he was resurrected he said touch me for spirit has not flesh and bone as you see me have no oh, i can't find it i don't know what to oh let me see if i can get lucky here Somewhere in the Bible it said something. There it is. Luke 24. Uh, Jesus is resurrected. And um, he wanted to show that, hey, I'm not just Casper the ghost. I'm, I'm an actual being. I'm an actual person. You know, I'm an actual physical body. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself handle me and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. So, this is an example for us to see that when we are resurrected, we are put in a new temple and a new body that is very much like the one that we're in now except without the corruption without the sin without the death without the desires of the flesh the world that we're in now is because of our fleshly desires and we're going to be given a new flesh, an imperishable flesh. Now, I want you to think about this. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, And let us make God in our image after our likeness. 
this process is still going on and you are not made in the image of God unless you are born of the Spirit of God. And then those of us that are born of the Spirit of God, the final piece of the puzzle, if you will, is on the day of redemption when we are transformed into our glorified body. All right, there's another verse here that's, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find it, but there's lots of verses. <laughs> that, the lots of verses, really, from Genesis to Revelation that, that explain this, that talk about this, that when we are resurrected, we are now completed. We are now finished, a finished product of what God has set out to do from the very beginning and that is to make man in his image after his likeness it says let us make man in our image after our likeness speaking of the the soul being of the body and spirit of God right so when Jesus comes it's completed and then you know, as well as then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And so also will he that sit on the throne say, Behold, I make all things new. And I think it's going to be greater than what we can even imagine. I don't know why anybody would try to sell anything else. Why? Why are you selling a thousand bonus years of dirty sex? Why are you selling this idea of two resurrections and ignoring the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ? None of this would be possible without Him. Nothing would be possible without Him and what He is doing for us right now. Nothing is possible without him he's the one that's done it all and he's the one that's going to finish it all right and all things that is being done is being done for his pleasure not yours but his pleasure oh. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. That's incredible. It's incredible. 